For those of you who are just joining us, we're on live with Kevin McDougal on Blog Talk Radio's Ask Oscar show on TNNDN Network. We have the great Kevin McDougal, who's going to be joining us live here in just a little bit. Um, again, my one of my best friends, the actual first classmate that I met um, when we got to school in 1990, in the, in the fall of 1990. Um, for those of you who are a little bit older and those of you who are uh, Notre Dame grads who are listening, you guys all remember Cast- Castle Point and remember the parties that used to happen at Castle Point. Well, um, I had the opportunity to stay with uh, Tim Ryan, Scott Kolakowski, uh, and then uh, K. Mack came in, and we got a chance to hang out with those guys a couple of days before we started camp. So, uh, Steve, do we have... Do we have K Mac in, in in the building yeah. right now? Is is he on is he on the horn? Can you hear me? K Mac. <laughs> hear me? I, I got you, brother. I oh, got okay. you. I'm I'm here being quiet. I'm, I don't want to interrupt the show. <laughs> it's true to form. K Mac. K Mac is is in the studio. Uh just as humble as always, man. K Mac, welcome to the to the show, man. We're glad to have you on, man. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Well, I, I, I want to get right to it because I know that we're probably going to have some people who are going to call in and have some questions. Um, before before we get back in, into the, the, the history of this whole thing and, and, you know, kind of a little bit your experience as a Notre Dame quarterback, tell us a little bit, you know, you were one of those guys that, you know, was kind of under the radar, you blew up, and then you kind of disappeared. So bring our bring our listeners up to, you know, kind of, what you're doing now, what keeps you busy these days, what's Kevin McDougal doing right now? Well, you know, after after I left Notre Dame, I had a little extent with the Rams and uh, bounced around a few leagues. I had gone to the uh, World League and uh, played in Canada and had a little extent in Arena. And uh, I played up to, I think I was like 29. Okay. And then... Um, yeah, after that, I, you know, I said, I'm getting old, man. I've got to, <laughs> I'm tired of keep taking all these hits. So um, then, of course, being in Florida, I got into real estate and, and had some uh, very good success there. And uh, actually now I own my own uh, transportation company. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, uh, you may know, but my parents were teachers for 30-plus years, sure. both yeah. of them. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, I got it that way. I got into also owning a uh, tutoring company. You know, I love to help kids. I always love to help people, you know, all the time. So I, I definitely wanted to get into something like that. So it's been very successful, and I'm I'm happy to help little kids and, right. you know, guide them in the right direction. And it's a lot of fun. You know, I, the, you know the continuing theme is I go back and I, I interview – all of our teammates, man. I mean, I've I've had, um, you know, Kevin. I've had Jeff on. Uh-huh. Um, I've had uh, uh, Mark Edwards, Kenan Tatum, um, Burt Berry. Yeah. You know, I've had all these cats on. And the bring it back game. memories. You know what I mean? I mean, it's 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 bring it's, it's it back a, memories. You bring back the memories, man. Yeah. But all of us now are in a situation where we're trying our best to lift people up. And, and whatever it is we do, you know, and, and, and in sh- some shape, form, or fashion, we're all working with young people. You know, Kenan's a coach. I'm a coach. You've got a tutoring company. Jeff's a coach. You know, I mean, you, you go back and, and you look at how we were raised in this thing, and it was a pretty – it was a different time, and we'll, we'll get, get back into that a little bit later. We're on live on TN Indian Network's Ask Oscar show with the great Kevin McDougal. Kevin, my co-host – um, that greeted you in the queue is a guy named Steve Herring. Now I, I, I'm gonna steal a little bit of his thunder, but you were, you were like Steve's like all time favorite Notre Dame football. Oh okay. man! So wait, so wait a minute. Not to put not to put any pressure on you. Not to put any pressure on you. But remember those cards we had drawn? Those those football cards we had when we were sophomores and juniors. Yeah, that had everybody's name and position and like the the pictures of us from I think it's the Northwestern game or whatever. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Steve had that whole cut of cards of that whole team plastered above his bed, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> Wait a um, minute. And you were his favorite player. So, I, I, so, so I'm going to step away from the mic, and I'm going to have Steve ask you a question because I know he's just beyond excited right now to have you on the show with us. Steve, go ahead, man. Take it away. Right. 
Well, Ke- Kevin, I mean, I can't even begin to explain it. It is an honor. And he didn't even say it was the uncut sheet. It was the uncut sheet. It was one of the first things I ever remember as a kid saving my money up for. And I, I ordered that out of the Notre Dame magazine, and I had it on my wall my whole childhood. <laughs> and uh-huh. I do now. I just just got it back. My mom had it in storage forever, and I just got it back. But it is a real real honor to have you on. I've said it for 20 years. Every time anyone asks me who's your favorite Irish player, it's your my answer every single time. So this is Extremely cool for me. Um, Oscar said I had one question. If I had one question to ask you, I'd have to go back. The 93 season, that's my favorite team of all time. And yeah. that Florida State game is my favorite game of all time in any sport. So if you were, when you sit down and you think about that game, uh, what are the biggest memories you have of it? And did you realize how big it was at the time and how long you'd end up talking about that game? And just kind of how you, you relate with that game in this, this day and age. Um, well, you know, at, at the time, um, you know, preparing for the game and everything, we, now I'm realizing, talking with Oscar, you 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 really didn't realize how big and how many people it touched. Um, of course, it was Florida State number one, we were number two, but we prepared so hard, and Coach Holtz put us through so much during the week that you didn't really get a chance to soak it all in. He stayed on us so much. Yep. And it, it, it was amazing that he, I, I, I think he, he knew what he was doing. Um, he, he would keep us, he would always tell us, stay out of the newspapers. Don't read your own newspaper <laughs> clippings. I know you remember that, Oscar, very well. Don't read your own newspaper clippings. Yeah, and um, so for me, it always I always stayed calm. Um, I stayed out of the the limelight. Even to this day, I do pretty much. Um, And just concentrated on what I needed to focus on that game. Um, There were so many things that I learned afterwards that was said during the game. And I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, When I realized, you know, how big it was, I think that was the first game that Reebok had come out with these the pumps or something, new tennis <laughs> shoes. I'm like, man, they've made these shoes for our receivers and everything. And and that's when I started really – and also that week, um, I think a lot of um, – everyone just came in early. You know, we, we had put a, um, a blanket around the fence where no one could see and our practices were closed. Yep. Um, so, you know, I did see it a little bit, but, uh, you know, I, I still kept it true to myself and said I'm going to continue on the path that I've been going on and, and staying out of that. And um, I think that those were the times that I realized that it was big, you know, other than once you got in the game and you, you could see just the the atmosphere and the magnitude. And I I think that was the game that it was the first college day, right, Oscar? Yeah, college game day. College game day was yeah, the was, first uh, one. So, on yeah, yeah, just to see Bob Costas and those guys out there, um, <laughs> it was big. It was big, and uh, j- just the whole game was a great memory. Um, you know, we had the the Heisman Trophy in the game. Um, you know, I think Corey Sawyer had won the best defensive back in in college football, and Aaron Taylor was up there with being the top lineman. So. I think everybody almost on the field went to the NFL. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was a huge game, huge game, and we became number one after that. So <laughs> that yeah. was my biggest memory: winning that game and becoming number one in the nation. It, it, it's it, it was a a lot of fun to actually be the quarterback, the starting quarterback of a team that actually won. You know, you're number one in the nation. It's it's great. It's great. Well, being from Florida, now that you live back home again, do you hear about that game a lot? Do people approach you and remember you? Are they mad at you? Anything come up around that? Yes, being in Florida, I had a lot of (laughs) people who didn't like me. Um, Of course, they were mad when I left Florida, period. Um, Everyone wanted me to stay in Florida. You know, they were like, oh, let's, all the talent is leaving Florida. And that year we had a lot of top players to go to Notre Dame and leave the state of Florida. So um, I get that all the time. They still, you know, my friends. Actually, my best friend at the time was a Florida State fan. 
So he was actually at the game hoping I'd throw for 1,000 yards but lose the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was like, look, I hope you have the best game of your life, but you don't win. So that, that's what type of fans Florida State had, and, you know, it, it, they were very, very good fans. So, And I witnessed that with my, my best friend at the time. That's funny. That's funny, man. man. Unbelievable. I'll remind us all around listeners, we are talking 93 Florida State Notre Dame with Kevin McDougal. This is blowing my mind. Oh, Kevin, I did have to ask a question on behalf of Oscar. Uh, uh-huh. You turn on, you turn on Notre Dame in the last 10 years. You're watching Brady Quinn, Jimmy Clausen, Tommy Rees even slinging all over the field. Uh-huh. In today's modern offense, how many touchdown passes would you have thrown to Oscar McBride? A uh, hundred. <laughs> 100. You know, that hurts me every day that um, that Coach Holtz just didn't want to air it out. And, and we felt we had the talent to match anybody. Um, you know, we we beat Florida State. We I think I say, and I'm sure Oscar thinks, that we should have won the national title. Absolutely. Hey, it, it wouldn't have hurt to add on, you know, a bunch of yards and, and all the accolades behind it. But, uh right. Right. Yeah, right. he was just a coach that um, he never liked to, to beat teams bad. Um, a lot of teams would pour it on and score 60 points, 50 points, and, you know, we were having our third string in in yeah. a lot of games. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, we never we – ne- we, we were a great team, but we everyone looked at the accolades and the yards, and Coach Holtz never let us do that. Um and and you know so we never had the stats to get all that attention, which we we definitely had the talent to get that attention and put up those big numbers. Right, Kevin. Let me ask you this, man. Um, do you think? And, and you make a really really good point. Do you think that with the the advancement of technology and social media, do you think that collegiate athletes are placed at a disadvantage? Um, because a, a guy like Coach Holtz, for him to say to a 2012 team, "Don't read your press clippings," right? That's not even possible. You know what I mean? I mean that that's like saying, "Okay, you can't have a cell phone, you can't have a Facebook account, you can't tweet, you can't Instagram." You can't, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like putting your yourself in a hole and closing yourself off from the world. So my question is. Do you think that maybe because of the time that we played that that may have been an advantage, whereas now that's more of a disadvantage for kids when they're hearing how great they are all the time? You know what? I think so. Um, and and I think Coach Holtz saw that. I'm sure he saw a lot of players that he had coached that were great that, you know, they fell victim to that type of to the media and things like that, and I think that's why he told us that so much. Um, I think the kids today with social media, it is unbelievable. Um, You know where people are at all times. They're tweeting with what they're doing at that moment. Um, It's so hard to stay out of the newspaper. I I think I talked to you a few weeks ago, and we talked Mm -hmm. about um, even just your local radio stations just have all these things on high school players. Right. Like, you know, it's like, oh, my goodness. And, you know, I'd, I never, you know, after a game, we just would, it was nothing that I remember we could listen to to see how the game was. No, nope. We would uh-huh. just go and hang out in our dorm, and it's a <laughs> normal night. Like, now, man, you can look on ESPN. They've got the whole ESPN on yeah, yeah. all of that. It's yep. five. It's like nine ESPNs now. <laughs> you know, it's like you know. And I tell people this: when we were coming up, you almost had to go to like Notre Dame and everything to be on television. Right. Exactly. Now you could play at the smallest schools, and they're on TV. Like Boise State, they're on TV almost every week. Yep. You know, <laughs> it wasn't like that back then. Now you could be seen anywhere. Yep. Um and and it's just a difference now. It is totally different. And I think they are at a disadvantage and it, it has hurt a lot of kids. Right. Um they started reading their news clippings, they think they're yep. better than what they really are and they don't work as hard and that's why 
Yep. You know, I, I, I think some talent out there has fallen to the wayside because yep. they didn't work as hard. Very very well said. We're on live with the great Kevin McDougal on Ask Oscar on the great TNN DN network. Um, you know, it's funny you say that, Kevin, because, um, you know, we think about it. You know, these are still kids. You know, yeah. we were still kids, man. Kids. I mean, I mean, 19, 20 years old, I mean, 21 years old. I had, I, God, you know, I, I remembered hearing older guys say, who were our ages then? I wish I knew then what I know now. Yeah. And I was, and I was like, yeah, I was, just, I was thinking to myself, well, that's just because you're stupid, you know? Because <laughs> I know it all, you know. I'm twenty, I'm twenty-one. I got it wrapped. Right, I know right. what's going on. Right. Man, we had no clue, and a part of that was that we were so sequestered, we were so just away from everything. Yes. You know, Coach Holst did a really good job. And the coaches did a good job of policing everything that we did. So, yeah. we, I mean, in essence, we we had to make our own fun, man. I mean, it was yes. first of all there there wasn't an Eddie Street Commons. There there were there wasn't all these new places to go, all these cool right. restaurants. I mean, right. the UP Mall was a joke. Um, there <laughs> there was. I mean, I'm, I, Steve, you're laughing, dude, but I'm telling you, there was nothing yeah. to do but play football and go to school. And you know we made our own fun. I mean, we would, we would and have, we had a ball. And we, we had, had a, a ball, ball, right? <laughs> we had a ball with nothing to do. It's amazing. Remember the remember the Sega and the Tech Mobile tournament? Oh yes, yes, yes. You know, yes. I mean, you know, ordering Papa John's pizza, at, you know, one <laughs> o'clock in the morning. I mean, we we had we had simple fun. Yes. But it was great because it made us so close. And here yes. we are, here we are, some twenty years later. As forty-year-old men, as fathers and, and and leaders in our communities, to say, you know what, this is still one of my best friends, and if I need something, I yeah. can pick up the phone and call this cat, and if he needs something, he can pick up the phone and call me. Yeah, and that you can't place a value on. You know, so true, so true. It's beyond it football. We came together because of football, yep. and uh, it it goes so far beyond that. Yep. Yep. You know, it's funny you said that because that's, that's what this whole program is about. You know, I, I enjoy talking to my old teammates, man, and we get to reminisce and talk sports. But the whole purpose behind this show is to help educate people so they understand that, you know, whether it's football or soccer or baseball or basketball or swimming or fencing or hockey or whatever it is you play, there's so much more to it than just the actual competition itself. Right. I mean, we came together during two a days and off season when 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 Jerry Schmidt, who's now the strength and conditioning coach at Oklahoma, used to put us through those grueling workouts. Remember how bad those were in the summer? <laughs> Do you I? Know? <laughs> you know, I mean, yes, it was horrible. You know, it yeah. was horrible. And we we would be on the field about to die, but we'd be pushing each other. And come yeah. on, man, national champs, you can make it. I mean, th- this was this was what made us who we are. This is the yeah. very fiber that brought us together. And to look back trade on it, it for the world. No, man, not, 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 it, not at all, not at all. Again, we're live with Kevin McDougal on the Ask Oscar Show on TNN DN Network. K Mac, I gotta ask you, man. I know that there was a lot of controversy swirling around our senior year yeah. coming in. You know, Coach Holtz was the the grand the grand master of what was Notre Dame. Yeah. You know, as we were coming into our senior year. Rick Meyer had graduated, Irv Smith had graduated, Jerome Bettis had left, Tom Carter had left, we'd lost a couple of offensive linemen, we lost Demetrius DuBose, we'd lost, we lost, we lost, and, you know, we didn't know how we were going to replace, you know, replace, replace, replace. Right. So we get the most heralded number one recruit in the nation in Ron Powell's coming in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Coach Holtz calls us calls a team meeting. I know you remember it. He comes in and he talks in about how great Ron Paulus is. Right. How Ron Paulus is ready to start. We haven't even seen this kid. Steve, now this this is this is stuff that you, you wouldn't know. So so for those of you who are listening in T N D N land, this is we're we're putting you inside of the team meeting room at the University of Notre Dame in nineteen ninety three in the spring. Okay, we're putting you in the spring. 
<laughs> Ron Powers is coming into Notre Dame. He's going to be a great quarterback. He broke all of Joe Montana's records. He broke all of Dan Marino's records. He's ready to start as soon as he gets on campus. Without a mention of Kevin McDougal at all, K-Mac, what, how does that make you feel? I, I, let me say this. I know I speak for all my teammates. That pissed us off. Right. That pissed us off because you had been there. You had paid your dues. You were our boy, you were our friend, you were our teammate, you knew what Notre Dame was about, and then to have Coach get up in front of the team and, and basically introduce the fact that Ron Poss was going to be his starting quarterback, how did that make you feel, man? Um, hurt, hurt. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, I think over, I was hurt because over since a freshman, I think, you know, they someone gave a count at one time that I had maybe 18 full drives or something, some number like that, mm-hmm. and almost every drive ended up in a touchdown. Right. Whenever yep. we, when the backups went in for the entire yep. game, I mean, and our for the backups would have been start. Let Let me put this. Let me temper that statement. Let me pepper that with something. Our backups would have been starters anywhere else in the country. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, you know, you got you at quarterback, me at tight end, Ray Zellers, Lee Beckton, Clint Johnson, uh, Ryan Leahy. I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on. Right, right. So, and and you know, it, you know, I thought about that, and I had had great spring seasons every oh, yeah. year since my yep. freshman year. Yep. So yep. for him to say that and not even give me a chance. As a quarterback, you're like, wait a minute, hold on. This is my. Team. I haven't even had a chance. When you've yeah. given me my chance to shine, I've shined. Right. So yeah. how can you not give me a chance my senior season? So it, it was it, it was hurtful. It was hurtful, and that motivated me even more. Even though I was already motivated, it right. just put an extra twist on it, an extra notch on it. So so we're in practice. We're we're scrimmaging. Um, Ron's taking reps with the first group, one versus one, drives back to pass. Um, Aaron Taylor, you know, misses a block. Jim Flanagan comes free, gets a sack. Ron Paulus breaks his collarbone. Um, I, I'm not a mean-spirited cat. I, I don't, I'm not a mean-spirited dude, and I don't think any of us are mean-spirited. Um, but I think at that moment... Our team became solidified, and it wasn't Ron's fault. You know, it wasn't. You know, Ron was just a kid who came to Notre Dame to play football. It wasn't. You know what I mean? It, he wasn't coming in. You know, Ron was a meek dude. He wasn't. And K Mac, you were in meetings with him. You know him. You played with him. He you played your position. Right. I don't. I don't think Ron was an arrogant cat. You Not know, at all. You know, Ron. Ron was was really a kid. I mean, really a sensitive kid that. Remember, he would cry when Coach Holtz would yell at him. You know? Right. <laughs> so he was really a sensitive kid. Again, Steve, you're getting you're getting stuff that nobody knows. Ron Powell used to cry when Coach Holtz yelled at him. But anyway, um, <laughs> he, we you know when when he went down, as sad as it was for all of us, I think that was the sign that things were were the way they were supposed to be. And with you being our quarterback and our leader, and I mean, I I know I, I speak for all of us, man. You know, when when you when you were in that huddle, there was a calm that you know, you know, Rick had a calm about him, but you had a calm that was so. I mean, I, I remember laughing in the huddle, man. I mean, I remember laughing. I mean, just the critical parts of the game, just just laughing. You were playing Florida State as third and short. You covered the huddle laughing. Hey, here we go. Let's get this. You know, it was it was it was so incredible to be a part of that. And I'm I'm sitting here like a little kid with this Cheshire cat grin, just just thinking about those moments that will always be a part of what made that team special. Yeah. And I and it wouldn't have been that way. I, I don't think it wouldn't have been that way if you wouldn't have been our guy. So that that kind of leads me into my next question, which is, so that happened, Ron gets hurt. What did it mean to you to then 
be the starting quarterback, to finally be the starting quarterback at the University of Notre Dame, to finally get your shot. Although maybe begrudgingly, maybe, you know, it had to, you know, be, you know, you know, God's will or whatever you want to call it, karma, um, what did it mean to you to finally get your chance to be the starter at the University of Notre Dame? Man, well, I, I mean, this question actually goes back. I have to, I would have to start backwards. Okay. Um, right. When our freshman class came in, I mean, we felt it was the best freshman class ever assembled, even at the time. Mm-hmm. And when you look at our senior year to see where everyone, you know, went, mm-hmm. um, how many people went to the NFL. Um, because you got to realize Jerome Bettis and Tommy Carter was in our class. They yep. left early. Yep, they did. You know? yep. So yep. Um, it started from then when stepping on campus, seeing the type guys that that had come in with me, it was unbelievable. And we were close from day one. Yep. So now when you get to our senior year, and I'm, you know, not the starter at one point, then mm-hmm. to finally get that chance, it just felt unbelievable to be able to lead a group of guys that you knew were going to, some people would be Hall of Famers and things like yeah, that. There's and no doubt. The greatest probably class ever assembled at Notre Dame, and Notre Dame had a unbelievable history. Mm-hmm. So it was just time to go. And I was so excited and that's what made me work so hard. It's not wanting to let you guys down. That I just could not sleep with myself. Um, I, if I if I went fourteen of fifteen, I was upset because some kind of way I should have completed that one pass. Right. I right. felt that I let you guys down because you all had great work work ethic. So in order, once that happened and I became the starter, it 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 was unbelievable. It was a feeling you can't explain because of you guys, and I'm and sure it was, it was vice versa. It was, it was like that for me too, man. I mean, I, I honestly, I think that's probably what made the team special is that, you know, yeah, we played for Notre Dame, and Coach Holtz was our head coach, and, you know, you had Coach Clements as your coach, and I had Skip and Coach Moore, and right. you know BY had you know um, Coach Turgo, and you know they had Coach Cooper in the secondary. You know, I mean that's all fine and well, man. But when we stepped on that field, we played for each other. Yes, yes. You yeah. know, we 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 played for the the, the sweat and the blood and yes. and and the pain that the other person had suffered and. And all those countless hours of abusive practice that we had for that previous week and, you know, finally being free of that and being able to go out and unleash it. And and I think you nailed it when you said, we just didn't want to be the guy. We I did. didn't, I, I didn't want to be the guy. No way was I going to be the guy. I wasn't going to be the guy. It, it just, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. My man is not going to. Make a tackle in the backfield, right? If, we, if we're running a sweep, uh, the defense is in. Good luck, buddy. You're not making the tackle. It's right. not happening. You know, right. I mean, if, we, if we're running G option and you got to get up to the corner, okay, well, all right, cornerback, you got me one on one. It's it's a no win situation for you, buddy. Sorry, right? You right. know, and that's probably what made us so special because we we play for each other. You know, it's funny. You know, I had A.T. as my roommate. You know, A.T. started as a sophomore, him and B.Y. Yeah. And, yeah. and Jeff and T.C. and all those guys started really early. Yeah. And, you know, A.T. said something to me junior year um, that really made a lot of sense to me. And, you know, he said to me, he's like, you know what, man? He's like, you have so much talent, but you don't understand what it means to play for somebody else. And I was like, what do you mean? And I'm like, I love my teammates, man. And he's like, no, 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 I don't I don't mean that. He's like, you got to go out and play like you're playing for your life. And I, I, he was right. I didn't get that. Right. I, I did, I, at that point, I did not get that. But when I came into camp junior year and I broke my jaw, remember when I broke my jaw? Yeah, yeah. Before we played Northwestern, right? And... 
I figured out when Irv came in to the <laughs> he came into the basketball arena, man. I was sitting in there. I taken my pads off, and I just seen Dr. Yergler. He's like, you know, your left mandible's broken, man. You're gonna be wired up. In comes Irv, you know, fully padded, and he's sobbing, you know, sobbing like a baby. Preseason All-American, eventual first-round draft pick to the New Orleans Saints, and he's sobbing. I'm like, what are you crying for, man? I just broke my jaw. Uh huh. You know, and he's like, we we can't win without you, man. You you're you're my brother. You're our teammate. We need you to play. And at that moment, I got it. Is that? I mean, I could have, I could have wired it up. I could have called it up. I could have called it a season and got a, probably another medical hardship year and played mm-hmm. for another year. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But it was about not letting my teammates down. And came out. Let me tell you, brother. You never, ever, let us down. Ever did you let us down? I mean, if anything, I appreciate want, it. We want, we wanted the ball in your hands more. We want to buy your hands more. We're on with Kevin McDougal on the Ask Oscar Show on TNN DN Network. Okay, Mike, I got to go back to the Florida State game, man. Yeah. Actually, actually, I'm going to skip the Florida State game because we handle it at Florida State. Yeah. Fast forward to the BC game. Oh. <laughs> oh. Fast forward to the BC game. <laughs> All right. We come up. We call a timeout in the first quarter. We come over to the sideline. I know you remember this. Yeah. They got eight in the box. We're trying to run 24 power. (laughs) They got a a linebacker on me, head up, and they got Mike Mamula, who ended up being a first-round draft pick to the Philadelphia Eagles on the outside. Right. Okay, if I block Mike Mamula, linebacker blitzes. If I block the linebacker, Mike Mamula comes free. We had seven to block eight. It just wasn't happening. (laughs) Coach Holtz called the timeout. I said, Coach, you got to take me out. Either flex me out or put Derek Mays in the slot. They got too many in the box. I can't block two guys. Coach Holst looked at me and said, We're going to run 24 <laughs> power. Remember that? Oh, Joe. Remember that? We're going to run 24 power until they stop. I'm like, Coach, I can't. Okay. All right. So we go, we try to run a 24 power, we try to run a 44 counter, and Boston College is stuffing us because they got eight in the box and we just don't have enough guys to block them, in spite of how good we might have been. We leave the field with, we got what, about four minutes left, we got the ball, I come out of the game, we put Derek Mays in the slot, and you finally get a chance to throw the ball. Yeah. Man, Kevin, what was that moment like with you engineering what should have been the national championship drive, probably the last national championship drive we'll see it for some time at Notre Dame Stadium. What was it like for you on that drive? You try to try to describe what it was like. I remember the formation was called Trey because you know it was you know they didn't have run and shoot back then, so they took right. me out. They put Derek in the slot, so I had three receivers and two backs. Right. Kind of walk us through that series, man, where we went down and scored. Well, actually, I mean people may not know this, but we actually um, went back to the basics somewhat, um, but the biggest thing about that was not only did Coach Holtz let me throw, I called and engineered the plays, which he, you know he had never done that before. Yep. yep. So I think even he might have felt, man, he might have been out of his element because we had to do so much and mm-hmm. score so many points in a short period of time. Right, right. And once we started doing that, and it was just I felt at home. See, when I came to Notre Dame, it was, you know, when I was being recruited, I think they thought that I was going to run the option or do beat a quarterback like Tony Rice. But that mm-hmm. wasn't me. That's why right. I think Coach Holtz and I never, you know, we didn't get along. I was <laughs> like, look, I can run, but I'm a thrower. You know, right. I don't want to run. Right. So, <laughs> You know, it, 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 so we got into that, but I was that's what I felt I was at Notre Dame to do, you know, the Joe Montanas and Joe to throw the ball. So right, I right. felt at home. So all he did was release me to do what I feel I was there to do anyway. Right. I was most comfortable in that moment. I wasn't 
comfortable. The times when people saw me running for touchdowns and running the option, man, I would be in the huddle like, oh, no, another option play. Please, <laughs> linebacker, don't come out here and just decide to destroy me. It's not my fault. It's Coach Holt's fault. I don't want to do this, you know. So that drive, I was, I felt at home, and that's why I think, uh, what, we scored 21 points or 22 points oh, in six crazy. or seven minutes. I don't know. Um, Steve, you know, you know exactly what it was. Was it like fourteen points in six minutes or something crazy like that? What was it? Um, I, I mean, I have the box scores all in front of me. It doesn't show the times though. Right. I don't have the times in front of me. I have the box score, and I got. I mean, you're right about you, that. Was the most passing attempts you had on the season twenty nine? The most oh, yeah. passing yards you had on the season, which with with two sixty one yeah. most completions eighteen. I mean, your stats. I'm looking at them right now. Unbelievable game for you. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I just felt at home, and and to go back games before that, you may remember this. We were playing Pittsburgh, and we used to always have. See, people don't realize we had in our playbook the exact <laughs> offense that Florida State had. Absolutely. We could have run the fast break offense. It was in our playbook. Yep, Coach absolutely. Holt just didn't want to do it. Right. So. During Pittsburgh, he finally put me in the shock, and I told you I almost passed out. I couldn't <laughs> play to come in. But listen, when he called, when he came in, I looked to the sideline like, man, I think they made a mistake. Now, I don't want to call it because you know Coach Hose is <laughs> famous for kicking you out even when you completed a pass. That was just him. So I hesitated like this can't be the right play. So I say, are you sure this is the right play? <laughs> yeah, call it. I called it. I threw the a 15-yard uh, slant route to, uh, I think it was Adrian Jarrell, and he never called it again. So, <laughs> look at, listen, look at every tape, every game. We never did it again. It was like he was afraid that he was like, uh-oh, I don't want to show all of that because I don't want to beat people that bad. And it was like, Coach, just if you ever let us go one right. game, right? I might not even play the third quarter. We'll be out of there in the second quarter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. and that's why, man, against Boston College, when, when we started passing the ball, mm -hmm. that was – we were at home. We I felt this is what I was here to do. And that's why things moved so smoothly. Oh, I tell you what, it was it was the most unbelievable experience. And you know, it's funny. I mean, I came to Coach Holson that time out in the first quarter, and I was like, "You need Coach, take me out of the game." You know, I mean, and that was the that was who we were. You know, it wasn't about you know we need to run some different plays. It was about understanding this is what we're up against, and this is what we're going to need to be these fools. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Let K Mac throw the ball. Yeah. We got Lake Dawson, we got Derek Mays, we got Clint Johnson, we got Adrian Jarrell. We got cats who can catch the rock, you know. You know, we got, you can't let it go, you know. Not to interrupt you, but, that, you know, I'm going to let everyone get a feel of the very last play, the touchdown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We go to the sideline, and Coach Holtz, he's looking like, man, this is the last play. I don't know what. what. And I told him, I said, look, just get everyone in the end zone. Let everyone run curl routes and keep moving. I'm going to buy time, mm -hmm. and we're going to score. Right. They're, we're going to score. I'll just have to buy time. Right. And I couldn't believe he let me do it. He called well, it. He, he called he calls, he calls split right 324 wide delay. Yeah, yeah. He called yeah. tight end delay for me. and. Yeah. It's true to form. When I passed that, the linebacker looked at me, and I went, oh, shit. And I took off. I ran a drag. The linebacker yeah. followed me, and Lake Dawson came up back behind the back of the end zone. You hit him for the touchdown. Exactly. Just Absolutely. get in the end zone and move. I need yes, everybody sir. in the end zone. I'll buy time. Yes, sir. That's what happened. That's yes, what sir. Happened. I, remember, I, remember, I remember thinking, why is he calling wide delay? I, I, remember, I remember thinking that, and you was like, don't worry about it. Just buy time. It's going to be exactly. all right. Exactly. 
we, we're we on the right. Ask Oscar show with the great Kevin McDougal on TN Indian Network. Guys, if you're listening out there, pick up the phone, give us a call. We're at 347-843-4242. Again, 347-843-4242. Uh, get on the horn. Talk to K-Mac. I, I mean, you might not get a chance to talk to him again because I'm telling you right now, the dude is slippery. Just as slippery <laughs> as he was on the field, he's slippery to get a hold of. So now that we got him pinned up, if you have questions, be sure to pick up the phone and give him a call. Again, that number, 347-843-4242. Steve, I, you you got to be coming apart the scenes right now, dude. I know there's, like, so many other questions you want to ask, Kevin, and, and we, we've got a couple minutes left. I, I want I want to turn it back over to you and let you get, you know, a couple more questions in um, <laughs> as we wrap this thing up. So go for it, bro. Well, I'm going to defer, Kevin. Again, we got some great questions, and I got – posted that we were going to be um, interviewing me on, online, and so some people wanted to ask you a few things. The sure. first one that has come up most often is Notre Dame has four quarterbacks right now heading into this season who want to be that long-term solution at quarterback. Um, I'm not sure how much you've seen of some of the backups or even Tommy Rees, but you know, what do you, what's your advice to young quarterbacks trying to, to get, get ahead during fall camp and they want to be the guy for this upcoming fall? You know what? Learn your craft. I, I, I tell that to everyone. Learn yeah. your craft. Get in the the the, the room and, and look at tape and work every day on your footwork, reading defenses, and and just making different throws. Um, I think uh, so many people nowadays, you you know. They, they, you know, if it, they they're not good at making probably a lob throw, like for instance, if if we have a screen called, a lot of quarterbacks have trouble throwing a little dump pass. Whatever you aren't good at, work on it. Work on it every day after practice. If you work on it in practice after practice, you get a player and come out and work on it some more, because that's the only way you're going to get better. Yep. So work on your craft. That 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 I can't. It, it's like nothing else to say. That 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 encompasses everything. Now a follow up to that question is a lot of times changing. The last fifteen twenty years, even in Notre Dame, there's only been three quarterbacks since I believe nineteen ninety eight that have finished their career at Notre Dame that were recruited. Only three total of all of the recruits at that position. So what would be your advice from all that you went through and the amazing successes you ended up having your senior year to be to those three guys who are not going to be the starter uh, opening game and may not start a game in 2012? Well, um, what would be the advice to them? Yeah, when they when they don't make the starting lineup for 2012 and they're going to probably think about transferring or right. maybe trying to figure something else out. Right. You know what? Follow your heart. Um, of course, you know, because I majored in business, you know, that was something I always wanted to do, and that's what I've gotten myself into. But um, follow your heart. Whatever makes you happy, whatever you want to do, start working on it. Um, don't You don't get your say. Coach Holtz used to use this, this word all the time, never stay bitter. You know, whatever happened, if you worked hard and you didn't become the starter, life goes on. Even for the people that, you know, like guys I know, Brian Young, that have had long, illustrious careers, they're still young. They've yep. got to live now. So sports only last so long, and so few make it to a level where they're going to get paid for it. So, you know, you've always got to keep sight of, even if you play, you still got to have a life after sports. So don't get down. I've been through it. And keep your head up and, you know, just follow your heart and what you love to do. I mean, that's amazing advice, and I think that applies to losing a quarterback quarterback competition as well as life. So that's some great stuff. I do have another question. This is actually coming from Eric in Iowa. Uh-huh. Um talking about how coming out into the 93 season, it wasn't expected to be that amazing of a season. Coming, You're losing Rick Meyer, you're losing Bettis, a lot of fantastic players we've talked about. And you go out and beat a Northwestern team, I think a lot of people expected you to handle. But 
how was that Michigan game? That's a game we haven't talked about. You go to Ann Arbor to upset number five Michigan. Was that a, a personal statement for you, or does it really tie into the whole team concept of you, you guys had a, a statement to make as a team? Yeah, I, I think it was a team concept. Um, you know, it always goes back to just like we talked about all night. We 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 were close. We were a great team, and no one wanted to be the guy that let the team down. The only thing that happened in Northwestern were we were nervous a little bit. Yep. And once that game was over, we realized, okay, we've gotten that out of our way. Let's go ahead and play some football now that we like we know we could play. And it started really with that Michigan game that – you know, people felt that, oh, man, where did this come from? But once again, as seniors, we knew we had this as freshmen. We just weren't able to display everything what we could do. And then we were able to ex- display to the people what we knew we had all along. So it was no surprise to us that we could do that. I mean, amazing stuff, Oscar. I mean, if you want to jump in there, what was your memory as, as a senior in that Michigan game as well as Ann Arbor? Because a lot of people might even remember that game more as a statement than even the Florida State game. I remember that game because I injured my ankle mm. the week of the Michigan game. And I wasn't even supposed to suit up for that game. And I, I, it was it was really difficult for me to watch because we had a we had a I think a sophomore wasn't wasn't he a sophomore wasn't Kraplevich a sophomore I think so yeah yeah um, he actually started several games actually after that as I was trying to rehab my ankle and then I came back and started the Florida State game but I just remembered being able to watch the game and I had this big boot on my ankle and I was thinking damn it I want to be out there because I you know it's that whole thing about feeling like you'd let your teammates down. Um, but you know it was you know I knew that you know we had a t we had Tim Ruddy, we had you know Mark Zadavasky, we had k Mack, we had Ray, we had Lee, we had Lake D, we had you know Clint, we had Adrian, we had b y we had Jeff Jim Flanagan, Pete Burses, Jeff Burris, Bobby Taylor, uh Willie Clark, John Covington, I mean, it was gonna be okay. <laughs> you know, it was gonna be okay. And there was, you know, there was no, you know, I was I was upset personally, but I I knew that my teammates would would make it happen, and that's that's what it was, man. It was it was truly a beautiful thing to be a part of. Although I my role was limited, uh, it was a beautiful thing to be a part of because I think probably one of the best things about being on that '93 team is that the expectation was so low. Just like you said, Steve, I mean, we lost the number two pick in the draft. We lost the number 10 pick in the draft. We lost the number 17 pick in the draft. We lost the number 20 pick in the draft. I think we lost the number 30 and 31 picks in the draft in Reggie and and Demetrius. I mean, we lost 10 guys that were drafted in the top 40 in the NFL draft the previous season. So, you know, that's like, you know, unheard of nowadays you know so I'm, it was it was something it was really something now i do have another question coming in from uh <laughs> it says davy in iowa another iowa question <laughs> kevin when you were playing in the world league and the cfl did you ever think that your 93 notre dame team would be able to beat some of those teams you were playing on <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Let me tell you, I think we would have. <laughs> you know, that, like I said, the guys we had my senior year were unbelievable. Um, you know, I, I think we definitely could have given those guys a, a run for that money, or it beat them pretty much. You know, Kevin, let me ask you this, man: when you got when you when you got to the Rams, because the Rams are still in L.A. at that time, right? Right. You got to the Rams. Was it was it just me, or did you look around the locker room or look around the practice field and look at guys who were in the NFL, who were making a gajillion dollars and who were bona fide pro bowlers and said to yourself, oh, he never would have played at Notre Dame? Never would have played. 
<laughs> was it just me, man, or did you Listen. actually do that? Did you look around and go? Never and would have touched the field. You would have been behind the pine, buddy. Listen. You would never have played. Listen, I, it, 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 <laughs> as I went through and, and even would see the NFL on TV and like, oh, my God, he it had to be favoritism for him to be there. The coach had to be his, his father or something. How did he make it? Like he he would have been cut. Yeah. Like yeah. He, he wouldn't have even Coach Holt, you know, in his oh son, I've got to get you to another school. Uh, you need to train. Hey, we'll do whatever we can to help you. We'll do whatever, whatever we can to help you, but uh, you just just take it on in the locker room. I don't need you. You can't help me win. We would have heard that so much on a lot of guys that was in the NFL. It is unbelievable. But, you know, that's why I go back to, like, when you asked me the question, what should kids do? You know, a lot of times it has nothing to do with you. Um, you know, it, it's just timing, and it, it just wasn't your time where, you know, you made it in the NFL. Because there's a lot of people that should have been there. For whatever reason, they didn't make it. Uh, you know, I feel myself, and um, you know, you got to move on. You got to move on, though. Right. Well, we have been live on the Ask Oscar show with my one of my best friends and and, and former teammate Kevin McDougal on Teen Indian Network. Um, I mean, K Mac, this is this has been great, man. Just to just to sit down and just to rap and reminisce and. Try to give people some perspective as to what it was like seeing Notre Dame through your eyes as a senior, yeah. as as the leader of of the number one team in the nation, as as a as the team that didn't have you know supposedly a fighting chance. So yeah. we're really happy that you came on. Um, be sure, TNND and family, check us out next week. We're gonna have the great Bobby Brown on next week. Oh, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> And wow. wide receiver Bobby Brown is going to be on next week. Um, and if we can, I've, been, I've reached out to her. We're going to try to have soccer superstar Melissa Henderson on as well. So th- that will be a great dynamic to have, have those two on the show uh, talk about their experience at Notre Dame and what they've done since then. Um, All right, so- Oscar, we do have a caller. I, 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 the screening button wasn't working before the first time Kevin called in, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and. Put this person on live. Caller, you're on live. If you had a question for Kevin McDougal or Oscar McBride, go ahead and shoot it. I don't so much have a question. I have. I just wanted to give an <laughs> anecdote of. Oh, uh, oh uh, <laughs> I wanted to give an anecdote of why Kevin McDougal is uh, is probably one of the greatest people outside of Oscar McBride ever to put a gold helmet on. Uh, and this goes back, I don't know if Kevin's even going to remember this, but his senior year, uh, Kevin had led Notre Dame uh, over Florida State, uh, which, as I recall, was the last time we were ranked number one. Um, and then uh, we had a slight hiccup the next week against Boston College. But Kevin, uh, who probably, and I, I guess my question would be, Kevin, as losses go, how 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 hurtful was that as a loss? Very hurtful. Um, yeah, of course, we had worked so hard to get to where we were at that point, and to get to the very last game and come so close, um, it was very hurtful. Um, we definitely felt we were the best team in the nation, and we had worked hard, like I said, and to lose by a field goal. Um, was very very hurtful, very hurtful, yeah. and and to experience, you know, being number one the week before, uh, it was great, and you know we didn't, it was t- we couldn't come back and redeem ourselves. It was the last game of the season, so that made it even more just ah, uh, you felt bad. Uh, sure, came back. You remember remember being on the sideline on one knee holding hands. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. As they were yeah. as they were kicking the field, as they were yeah. lining up. We were me and you and Clint yeah. and Lake. All four of us were on a knee, holding hands, as they lined up to kick that field goal. And I don't know if you remember the following week on the inside cover of Sports Illustrated, I think, or maybe it was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. <laughs> it showed 
the aftermath of the kick where all of our defensive players were laying out on the field like a bomb had just gone off. Exactly. Remember that? You remember yes. that? Man? Yes, yes. Now, yes. quick quick question. The caller didn't identify himself, but he has a fantastically familiar-sounding voice. Caller, could you identify yourself? Yeah, this is Jonathan from New Orleans. New Orleans. Oh, okay. My man. Yeah. I, yeah. Oscar, Oscar may know who this is. Of course. And I, I think if I provide some more detail – that uh, I think I think Kevin might in fact put the pieces together as to who this is because the conclusion of my story is that the day after this gutting loss, I got to play on Notre Dame Stadium turf in the Inner Hall Football Finals <laughs> for Morrissey <laughs> Manor. Oh. And and who ha- and who happened to be in the stands with Greg Lane, both Mannerite, G Lane, <laughs> was Kevin McDougal and Greg Lane, and I have never ever forgotten that that uh-huh. these two guys, the day after that loss, got up in the morning and went to see their dorm mates play in a goofball inner hall football game. Yeah, I thought yes. that was the most incredible thing. Oh man, but but it it all goes back to that what we had at Notre Dame. That's that, right. That story right there, yep. just encapsulates Notre Dame beyond football, beyond anything. That's yep. why I wouldn't, I didn't make the NFL, but I would not change anything in the world for those experiences. That's, That's it, it right there. That's, That's it. it. I didn't make the NFL either, and I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, I wouldn't change a thing. And you know what? What's so funny is we haven't even scratched the surface of stories that oh no people would be oh man I it, no. you know we, it, no. it's just so many things no. oh man it was an uh, unbelievable just, just, experience. We'll just, in just tell everybody to hang out, wait in 2013 when you and I do a book compilation together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a double book. It's going to be a go. doozy. It's going to be a doozy, let me tell you. <laughs> well, I, I want to say thank you to Josh. You called in. I don't know about you guys. I thought that was Jack Nolan. I literally, I legitimately thought you sound like Jack Nolan on here. <laughs> well, maybe I, I, maybe you know, I have another career in front of me. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> you could. <laughs> I, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's funny. I, you know, Jonathan is, is a great friend of mine. Actually, uh, 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 one of the board members of the Fit for Life Youth Foundation in New Orleans, uh, along with uh, Dr. Eric Griggs, um, they're doing just great work down there with the kids in the Broadmoor District, um, using basketball as a means to to mentor to kids who have been displaced since Hurricane Katrina and everything, and trying to rebuild the city and using sports to help keep these young people off the street. Um, Jonathan's a good, great, great man, great, great friend of mine, and just a tremendous Notre Dame man. So, um, you know, Jonathan, thank you for for calling in and supporting the show. Yeah. Thanks very much. I uh, thank Kevin, you, Kevin. Great, great hearing your voice, Kevin. No problem. Anytime, anytime. Take it easy, guys. All, All right. right. Thank See you very Jonathan. much. All right. Be good. Bye. Okay, again, we're on live with the great Kevin Dougal on the Ask Oscar show. Again, K Mac man, thank you for coming in. Uh, no I, I mean, it, it, it was it was good to hear your voice, man. I was actually in Florida last week up in, at my mom's in Orlando, and um, I, I, I knew that you were out here in San Francisco, so we kind of missed each other. But right, um, we got to definitely definitely get together, man. I, I know that um, I, I miss I miss uh, your pops and your moms. I mean, I. I mean, they, I don't think they missed hardly any home games. I mean, they was like my surrogate parents because my mom <laughs> didn't get a chance to come to many games. So I, I really got close to your pot when he would come up. So be sure to tell them I said hello and, and kiss the baby would. for me. Just so you guys know, Kevin McDougal is, is, is a brand-new father, has a beautiful baby girl. Yeah. Um, please kiss my niece. Uh, and, I and, definitely will. And uh, give my best to your folks. Uh, Kevin McDougal, ladies and gentlemen, K Mac, love you, brother. I'll uh, definitely you. give you a shout a little bit later. Thanks for coming on. All right. 